Now for unit 10, we're going to be looking at sampling distributions. We're still looking at probability. Normal distribution, which is the previous unit, it will come back. So normal distribution is something we're going to continue using. But for today, we're going to be looking at what we call probability distributions. And then from here, we're going to move into what we call the expected value. Now, expected value happens like in raffles or, or gambling. Now, this is how casinos look at it, is how much if we do a raffle, how much is each ticket, right? Some people will win some money. Some people will lose money. Now, if we made the same value for all of them, remember, you guys have heard the word average, right? If we had the same value for all of them, well, what, what does the house get? You know, like who, whoever's running the raffle, how much do they get per ticket? Or whoever's doing the gambling, in this case, casinos, how much do they get each time you bet? So let's take a look. At a raffle, there's 1,500 tickets are sold at $2 each for four prices. So you can win $500, $250, $150, or $75. You buy one ticket. What is the expected value of your game? Okay, so again, what we're looking at here is there are some tickets that are going to win. They're going to win money, and some others are going to lose. Now, the way we're going to see this, let me make a table. And I'm looking at, okay, there's five possible cases, right? There's four prizes. I could win 500, 250, 150, or 75 dollars. There's four prizes. However, I could buy the two dollar ticket and not win anything at all. So I have five possible choices. So we're going to call this gain, or I'm going to make a table. I'm going to call this gain, and I'm going to say probability. What's the probability of each of my cases? And I said I'm going to make a table. One of my cases is that I win $498. You might be thinking, um, hello, Mr. Lenzo. It says you won $500. But then I'm going to remind you that I paid $2 to play. So in reality, I only gained $498. So that's one of my cases. Another case that I have is that I can win $248. I know the price is $250, but remember, I did pay my $2 to play. Another case is I, I could win $148. I could win $73. Or I could lose $2. Some people are like, ah, you only lose $2, but you can win up to $498. Again, some, some tickets you're going to win money. Some tickets you're going to lose money. The way these people are looking at, whoever's doing this raffle is, if we were to put them all together, how much does each person get for each ticket? So let me look at my chances. How many chances do I have? What's the probability? that I win the $500 price. There's only one ticket winning, right? However, there were 1,500 tickets sold. So can I say that the chance that I win the, the big price is one out of 1,500? Let's say that. Okay. How many tickets win the $250 price? It's also, right? One out of 1,500. Can I say that for one out of 48, it's only one ticket out of 1,500? To win $73 is also one ticket out of 1,500. But to lose $2 is going to be 1,496 tickets out of 1,500. Yeah, How many tickets are there that don't, lose, that don't win anything? 1,496. Let me fix my 40. It doesn't quite look like a 40. There you go. Okay, so what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do, let me see. Okay, the $498, I'm just going to multiply 498 times 1 over 1,500. We know how to multiply fractions, right? When we have a whole number, we multiply it to the top, and then fraction means we divide. Whatever I get here, I'm going to go 248 
times one over 1,500 plus 148 times one over 1,500 plus 73 times one over 1,500. And then I'm gonna write minus two times 1496 over 1500. Let me highlight each of these operations, each of these multiplications. Okay. Notice I was multiplying how much do you win times what's the probability that you get the winning ticket. And I know there's a bunch of pluses. I added all the probabilities. However, the last one, it's a minus. You guys pay attention to the minus. The reason why I have a minus is because that one you lose, okay? Now we can easily use a, a calculator, right? 498 times one divided by 1500 gives me 0 0.332. And I'm not gonna simplify my decimals just yet. Plus 248 times one divided by 1500, it tells me 0 0.165333. Oh, wow, okay, continues going. I'm just gonna leave it at that. Plus I'm gonna put it six decimal places, probably more than what I need but I'm just gonna keep it at six. 148 times one divided by 1500, it gives me 0 0.9, I mean 0 0.98666. Again, I'm gonna write six decimal places, more than likely more than what, more than I need. And then the next one plus, 0 0.048666 and then minus 2 times 1,496 divided by 1,500. It says minus 1.994666. Okay, so let's, let's do this. Let me add all these things up. 0 0.332 plus 0 0.165333 plus 0 0.098666 plus 0 0.048666 minus 1.994666. I said I combine them, all of them and it gives me I'm gonna round this to two decimal places, okay? My answer, my work, notice I was going up to six decimal places and I said, probably more than what I need. However, my answer, I'm gonna round it to two decimal places because we are dealing with money. So this gave me a negative 1.35. Don't we deal with money with two decimal places, right? So this gives me a negative 1.35. So that means, okay, what does this mean? The, what this means is that we sold the 1,500 tickets. If we were to look at it, like some people win, some people lose. If we were to give the same value to all of them, we were to do the average of all of them, everybody loses $1.35. Is that a good deal? Of course. If we're going to do a raffle, I want people to lose, right? I don't want people to, to win because otherwise I would lose money, right? I want everybody to lose because then I'm collecting money. So it makes sense that everybody will lose. So the expected value is minus $1.35. Okay, let's take a look at the next example. You throw a die. Right, your die, they have six numbers, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. How does the, light, the die look like? Something like this. You have a one, you have a two, you have a three. There's a four, five, and six. So you throw a die. If you win $2, 
when the number is even and you lose $1 when the number is odd, what is the expected value? If you pay $1 to play the game, will you win in the long run? Okay, let's take a look. Okay, so there's two questions. The first one says, you throw a die if you win $2 when the number is even and you lose $1 when the number is odd, what is this expected value? So it seems like I don't have to pay in this case. I'm just gonna go in and I'm gonna say, okay, let me make my chart. I can gain and I'm gonna do my probability of X. I must probability of a gain. I could gain $2. That's the probability that I get I win $2. It says you win $2 when the number is even. There's three even numbers, right? So three out of six. But then I lose $1. What's the probability that I lose $1 if the number is odd? Um, There's three out of sixes as well, right? So let me look at my expected value. Okay, so I'm going to go to... times three out of six minus one times three out of six. For space purpose, let me go up here. Two times three out of six, right? I win $2 times the probability that I win $2 minus one times three out of six. Now, two, times three out of six, and I'm gonna go two times three divided by six gives me one minus one times three. Remember I multiply with the top number and then I divide it with the bottom number. So one times three is three divided by six, it gives me 0 0.5. So when I subtract this one minus 0 0.5, is 0 0.5. Because we're dealing with money, let me call it 0 0.50. Now it's a positive value. Huh. So that means if this game was to happen and we make every, we, we get the mean out of each time we play, I expect to gain, I expect to win 50 cents each hand. Of course, I will play this. Now, if you pay $1 to play the game, mm, okay, remember, 50 cents was when I did not pay. Now, if you pay $1 to play the game, wouldn't I subtract 0 0.50, which is my expected value, when I did not pay, minus $1 for each game, so this gives me negative 0 0.50 says, will you win in the long run? When I didn't pay, I expected to make 50 cents on each throw. Now that I paid $1 to play the game, I expect to lose 50 cents on each throw. So will you win in the long run? No. So matter of fact, let's take a look at this one. This last part that we saw. Let's say that I'm expected to lose 50 cents on each game. And then I come over and said, okay, uh, you're going to play this game. What's the, what's, what's the expected value if you play this eight times? You're going to say, well, each game I expect to lose 0 0.50. I'm going to multiply this times eight because I'm going to play this eight times. So I expect to lose four dollars. Now, are there people if you actually do this, you grab a die and let's say um, you pay a dollar to play the game. I give you two dollars if the number is even. You give me one more dollar if the number is odd. You play this eight times. Some of you will say, yeah, Mr. Lonzo, I have to pay you $4. I lost $4. Some of you are going to win money. Like, you guys will be Mr. Lonzo, you owe me. And some others will be like, Mr. Lonzo, I owe you more than $4. Well, 
what I'm looking at is if I make a mean, I, I get the average. Again, casinos or gam you know, people that host gambling, they don't care about one player. They're looking at it as, as an average. So that's what we call expected value. Now here, what is the expected value of roulette if a number is chosen? Okay, so if you notice, okay, looking at roulette, there's two numbers that are green, a zero and a double zero. And then there's 36 other numbers. 18 of them are red and 18 of them are black. So I'm going to say there's a total of 38 numbers. And if you guys have seen roulette, they, they do spin this, this wheel that has 38 squares equally likely. They're the same size. So every number has the same amount of chance of landing. There's 38 numbers. I said 38 because there's a zero and double zero. So what is the expected value of roulette if a number is chosen? Okay, so if I was to go and choose a number, let's say I say my number, I pick a number, let's say seven red, and I bet on it. Well, what is the expected value? Keep in mind, though, that a lose is that I lose my bet. Right, if I don't get seven red, whatever I bet, I lose it. And a win is 35 times the bet. They will come and tell you, for every dollar you win, you, you bet, if you lose, you lose your dollar. But for every dollar you bet, you get 36. Yeah, they give you the one dollar they gave that you, that you started with. But in reality, you only gain 35 times your bet. Okay, so what is the chosen bet? What is the chosen value? Well, it depends on my bet. Let's assume... Let's assume I only bet one dollar, because I want to see what's expected value for every dollar. I want to see how the casinos look at this. So let me see. I'm gonna make my my chart. I can gain. What's my probability? I can gain, or I can lose. In this case, one dollar. Right. Or I can gain, I can make $35. Like I said, if I get it wrong, I lose the $1 I bet. If I get it right, they give me $35. Okay? And obviously my $1 back. So I make $35. What's the probability that I lose? There's 38 numbers total, right? So I'm going to say probability that I lose is 37 out of 38. What's the probability that I do win? One out of 38. So my expected value, and remember, I'm looking at the expected value for every one dollar. So my expected value will be negative one times 37 over 38 plus 35 times one over 38. So I look at my gain times my probability. And if I look at the first part, this gives me a negative 0 0.973684. Again, I'm looking at six decimal places, probably more than what I need, but that's how I'm going to keep it at. And then the other gain, on the gain, 35 times 1 divided by 38 gives me a positive 0 0.921054. When I combine these, it gives me, I'm going to round my answer to two decimal places, okay? I'm going to round this to two decimal places. Again, my answer, I'm going to round it to two decimal places because that's with money. So my, this thing says negative 0 0.05. Ah, so it seems that if I gamble, for every dollar that I bet, casinos expect it to make five cents. Right, some people will win, some people will lose. I'm looking at the average of every bet. Some people, some of you might be like, only five cents, really? Yeah, five cents out of every one dollar. But there's people that show up and they're like, boom, let me bet $20. Boom, let me bet $100. 
And there's many, many people that are playing at the same time. So yeah, five cents out of each person for every dollar. Yeah, that's a good income for the casinos. Now let's take a look at the last part for today. What is the expected value of roulette if black or red is chosen? Keep in mind that a lose that a loss is losing the bet and a win is matching the bet. Okay. So what this means says is if I lose my bet, obviously just lose it, right? If I bet some money, I lose it. Now if I win, they just match it. Whatever I bet is the the, the money that they give me. So again, let me take a look at this as a one dollar. Let's say I show up and I bet one dollar. I'm just looking at what's the probability. How did the casinos look at this? Now, let me make my table. I'm going to choose the gain and my probability. And let's say I bet $1, right? I can either lose my $1 or I can make my one. I can gain $1. I'm going to put a positive to emphasize that I win because here on red and black, the win is matching the bet. So if I bet $1, they give me $1. If I bet $20, then they give me $20. I'm just looking at how the casinos look at this for every $1 that is that I, it is gamble. All right, so my probability of losing. What's the probability of losing? I know there's 18. I'm going for black, right? Let's say, I, oh, oh no, I, let's say, yeah, let's just say I choose black. I'm going for black. So I'm going to lose if there, if it lands on the red or if it lands on the zero and double zero. So there is 20, I mean, let's see, there's 18 red, right? There's 18 red, 18 black. So the probability that I lose, I'm going to say is 20 out of 36 right there's 18 red so with reds i lose but i also lose lose with a zero or double zero so there's 20 out of 36 chances well better yet 20 out of 38 chances that i lose now the pro the chances that i win is 18 out of 38 okay so let's take a look at this how does the casino look at this? I'm going to say negative 1 times 20 over 38 plus 1 times 18 over 38. So negative 1 times 20 divided by 38 gives me a negative 0 0.526315. Six three one five. I'm just, I'm not really rounding. I'm just writing the first six digits. Again, it might be more than what I need, but I'm gonna put it at that. Plus one times eighteen divided by thirty-eight gives me zero point four seven three six eight four. And when I combine this, negative 0 0.52635 plus 0 0.473684. Now my answer, let me run it to two decimal places. It gives me negative 0 0.05. Ha, interesting. Usually in the casinos, many people bet just one number. But there's the idea, there's the belief that if you bet on a colored, right, red or black, instead of a single number, you increase your chances. But we can see that it is not true. The casino doesn't really care. You can bet on a single number or you can bet on a colored. The casino will make five cents out of every $1 you bet. Again, this is an average. So this is what we call the expected value. And I say you would lose because it's negative, right? So whenever we're looking at gambling and we said, oh, if the chances is negative, that means it's a chance I'm going to lose. The average is I'm going to lose. And that's how we do expected value.